guys, uh, you know, you, you do the high school. When these kids go to college, do they still utilize your services? Absolutely. We, so one of the things about right now, the COVID crisis is a lot of our students from college are working with us for virtual support because they're still, some of them are struggling to figure out how to adapt to virtual classrooms. It's, it's different. It's a different transition, but a lot of our students, they've either come back and helped worked with us for support over the summers. Cause that's one of the things that's very important is taking classes over the summer to either keep pace or get a little bit ahead to give yourself some breathing room. Um, and we're always here. I mean, we, a huge part of our business, at least during the summertime and right now is with our college clients. We don't fall out of touch. We really do communicate. I mean, I regularly message my students that are in college. Is that right? Wonderful. It sounds like you create a really nice bond with these kids, like a relationship. I, I, we, I try to, I mean, it's, you're, I don't want to say with everybody because some of them you just connect with. And with some of those students, you really, you have a real connection. You really, really do. And you, I said this earlier, but like some of the families, they trust you with what is most precious. And by an extension, when I refer to those students, I go, yeah, you know, I have a kid who's at Bucknell. I have a kid who's at this school. And they go, aren't your kids only five, four, and three? And I go, oh, no, no, one of the students I work with, but... <laughs> You're all my kids. Like you don't, you're all like the, the kids we work with are, they become us. And that's the kids who work with London, the kids who work with me, we're, it's the astute family, but you know, they, we become something larger. We're connected. Nice. Special. It's special. Yeah. I mean, I think it really is, you know? Oh, who's that? George again. I see two Georges. Yeah. Sorry. I, <laughs> I, I uh, this, I'm having trouble. It's technical. I think everyone's on Zoom here. <laughs> <laughs> it says George uh, is the host now. He took over. Yep, yeah, I am. All right. So everything's cool here. Um, so Michael, listen, you guys are also, you know, I, I, your spot there. Karen and I visited London, and it's so cozy there in uh, in Randolph. Like it doesn't seem like it's a school setting. And London said, like, this is on purpose. We want people like. They're in school every day, sitting at a uh, at a chair. Like this is designed to make them feel like it's kind of home. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Like, what made you guys get it to do that? Well, absolutely. I mean, the thing is, you don't. We want to foster creativity. We want to foster educational enrichment, and part of that is by having diverse environments. And we have different rooms for different personalities. You can lounge on a couch if you want to study there. You can. I prefer the conference room because I'm a pacer. I can't sit still. Uh, everybody, <laughs> and that's the thing is that everybody's different and everybody has different proclivities for when they're trying to study. And personally, we, each one of us is different and we try to highlight those unique aspects and that's what promotes the most successful learning environments. Yeah. Did and it's seen two, even the kids. Sorry. I was sorry, just going to say, did okay. you two like sit down and think about that one? Like, because you, you really see that thoughtfulness that's gone into like when George and I like walked around your spot, you really see that. I was like, wow, each room has its own kind of flavor and its own, you know, atmosphere. Well, but, but that's it was all my really idea. unique London, to you guys. It was all my idea. London, she's, she's not here. Just I'm <laughs> taking all the credit, obviously. <laughs> I'm going to get killed when I get home, but you know, it's... It was a cooperative effort, yeah. and that's the thing. We're we're a husband and wife team. Everything's a partnership. You know, we're I could not do. Well, look at that. Hey, so are yeah. we. <laughs> and, and truth, that makes it makes our marriage stronger, and it also makes the business stronger because I couldn't do what I do, and she couldn't do what she does without us, without each other, because we support each other. You know, as Rocky says, "I got gaps, you got gaps. Together, we fill gaps." <laughs> I like that. Uh, Is so, that what Rocky so says? That's what Rocky says. Yeah. Uh, so and Michael, we we were there, and uh, you know, we we and there was like on the couch. I, think, I think it was a, <laughs> a Sunday, a Sunday, and uh, like all the top Randolph athletes kind of walk out, and uh, you know, what's what's the attraction with athletes and and the tutoring? Uh, do you find they they maybe are uh, 
spending some more time tutoring because they're thinking about the next level and thinking about playing at the next level and trying to make sure they get the, the top scores in their classes and on the test prep? Well, absolutely. I think it's part of the college recruiting process. And when you're working, because we do a lot of college work, is when a school is talking to you, you basically give your GPA and your academic index and they can calculate and say, you're around here. We can help you through the admission process if you get to this point with your score. And you're talking schools that are extremely competitive. And that incentivizes it. You have a student who has an opportunity to go to a school that is life-changing. Then they come in and they say, hey, this is our goal. We have to get here. You have a tangible goal that you can finally work towards. It Instead of saying, which is one of the first conversations I have with people, in a perfect world, you would get a perfect score. But realistically, where would you like to be? And setting that benchmark, you can always push it further after. But when you, you're you reaching for something tangible, well, that's what these kids have when they come in. They know we're going to get a lot of scholarship money. They know we're going to reach out and have the potential to get to an institution that will set up not only myself, but my children and generations after. That's humbling prospect. And mm -hmm. When I, I talk to kids, they, they know I love sports. So they come in and they, there's kind of like a connection there. And I used to coach. So there's kind of a rapport, a good rapport initially with a lot of the athletes. That, that's cool. And, that, you know, and Michael, I, I want to be respectful of your time because I feel like you, uh, you, you got to jump off on a Zoom, if I'm not mistaken, or do you not? Uh, I, I have the, I have a couple extra minutes. I have till 3.15, but I understand okay. you have people too. So you just yeah, let we, me. We have our next guest, but I don't want to rush in. I know we kind of got a little, a little uh, delayed here with some of the technical stuff. You know, one thing that I talked to a lot of coaches about and, you know, um, uh, school people, like that, that, that uh, one thing is like, like a lot of kids like, oh, I'm going to get a scholarship for, from basketball. Um, and a lot of, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of athletes, I know a lot of colleges, a lot of college coaches, and they are always saying you're going to get more money for what you do in the classroom than what you're going to do, even if you're the best, you know, there's only so many full scholarship uh, athletes. Most of them are partial, maybe quarter, 10 percent even. Uh, a lot of that's coming from from academics. Can you talk a little bit about how important that is? For these uh, athletes? Well, so honestly, a lot of even your smaller schools, they're very limited with what they can give financially and they can help you out particularly scores or better grades, they can give you more merit money and they can kind of help your application through that process and find you merit money the more academically successful you are. And you're, you're hundred percent right. There's a very finite number of pure athletic scholarships that they have available. And that's why we and coaches encourage students to push the envelope as, po as far as possible by improving your academic index as much as you possibly can. Because yeah. if a student can get into, there's typically thresholds and it depends on each school. But if you can get into that dean or presidential threshold, you're, you're talking a quarter, half of your tuition could potentially be paid for depending on the school's allocation of funds. Yeah. I, and that's so fun. You know, so it's so important that these kids do well in the classroom with a GPA as well as the college boards. Um, and I think that's, you know, I, I, people must be wising up to that though, Michael, don't you think? I mean, they are like utilizing a service like yours because they're starting to, uh, to really pay attention to that. Would you say? Absolutely. And one of the things I really, whenever we work with a college, a potential college student is, we really do tell people about ROI, which is your return on your investment. And we tell them when you're looking at schools, this may have a great name, but ultimately you want to come out with the smallest amount of financial debt that, you know, you have to weigh your options. Look at starting salaries, look at median income of the job coming from those schools, look at employment percentages from those schools. And those are all important aspects to weigh when you're looking to apply and ultimately attend to college. It's not just the name. If you're going to be paying $75,000, $80,000 a year for a school, even if it's a better school, 
it may not be worth Rutgers, which I am an alum. Fine. I'm a little biased. I know, but <laughs> you're paying 30,000 all in 33,000. It's you're not going to get the same ROI because you're paying half the price, less than half the price for a very reputable school. That's got a national reputation. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so Michael, people listen, watching, how can they find you? How can they reach you? Uh, you can reach out to us. Go on, meet your lovely wife. Yes. She's on obviously, Sunday afternoon. Like we did. Yeah. She's the, well, right now she's at home with the kids with, cause we have the COVID crisis, but she's obviously the face I'm just here floating around once in a while. She's the one who runs everything. <laughs> um, yeah. it, they can find us at astuteacademics.com. Message us at info at astuteacademics.com or astuteacademics at gmail.com. Again, that's astuteacademics.com at info at astuteacademics.com or astuteacademics at gmail.com or follow us on Instagram as well. Yeah, you're very active. And again, thanks so much for all that you do for, yeah, for our community as, well. just as, your, as your business, uh, Michael, as well as uh, all the support you do for all these athletes, you know, on your own through more Sussex sports. And again, uh, I, I'm just going to echo the, the, the thanks that the athletic directors have been telling us for folks like you for coming on and showing these athletes love as right now they're kind of in limbo with what, to do, what they're going to do for this spring as far as playing sports. So, oh, Michael, thank, thank you. Thank you for having us. And it's honestly our pleasure. We are all in this together. So 100 percent. Yeah, thank you so much. So nice to meet you. You as well. Um, Stay safe and yeah. talk to you guys soon. You all guys right, Michael, too. sounds great. So we'll we'll let Michael go. Thanks again, Mike. Um, right. And then we're gonna we're gonna go right into our next guest, which I'm really excited about. So we're gonna go right into our next guest right after this. Show up commercial. All right. Welcome back to the Morris Sussex Sports Talk Show. <laughs> uh, so glad you could join us. Let me see. We're going to go back to We've got to stop showing my screen here. What are we looking at? Bear with me. Jeez. All right. We want to look at not my screen. God, you know, just when you think you figured out Zoom. Technology will... Oof. All right, so we're, we're bringing people on. We have our main man, um, Lloyd Wilson. Lloyd, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Hi, Lloyd. Hello, how are you doing? And Good. we have Danny Barrels from Randolph. Or Danny, are you with us? Hey, George, how are you? I'm good. Hi, I'm good. Dan. Thanks for joining us. Here. All right, Danny, bear with me a second. We're just, okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, thank you. Um, <laughs> dealing with the uh, the Zoom gods, and uh, I heard the other day that COVID nineteen COVID nineteen was actually uh, started by the people that um, created Zoom. I don't know if you guys heard that. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no, I did, no, I did not hear that. One. Uh, I, I'll tell you this. So, any are you guys on video? Are you guys on video? Oh, there you uh, are. There he is. Uh, there's hey. Dan. Hey, Dan. See ya. Uh, Good to see ya. And Lloyd, are you on video? Um, no, I'm trying to get it. Okay. But well, yeah, just keep going. I'll, I'll figure it out during the way. All right. As Lloyd get figures that out, he'll come on board. So Dan, I'm just going to introduce everybody, including yourself. So you know Karen. She's yeah. with Morris Sussex Sports. We have Lloyd Wilson. Lloyd Wilson's also with Morris Sussex Sports. He's a broadcaster. Um, there's a lot of play-by-play -play broadcasting. He's currently uh, he's in college down at Rowan for broadcasting. And Danny, you, you, I, wait until you see his picture. You'll never forget his face. That kid will be on ESPN, I'm telling you. <laughs> um, and I, I want to introduce you to, to uh, everybody, to Dan Beerles, uh, former gladiator for the uh, Randolph Rams back in the 80s, class of 86, 86 Dan? 87, but the senior year of football was 86. 
Okay, yes. And we promoted this a little while ago, Danny, and um, uh, one of your, I got a couple of hate mails and a couple of fan mails from you. Um, and one of them, I got a, I got a, a trivia question for you. One guy said, he said, ask him if he can guess who said this. And he said, uh, let me get this right. Um, he said, say this to Danny and see if you can figure out who he is. So he said, I'm probably going to get this a little wrong, but he said, tell B-Rock to go back to his own house or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's you know who that is? Christian Nayrag, right? Yeah, you got it. All right. Yep. Another guy, another uh former uh, actually a Mountain Lakes guy, uh played for another legendary coach. So he we're gonna have him on later in the week, I think. Okay. Um but Dan, hey, this is all about you, man. We created this talk show. Normally we do the play by play broadcast and all the covering of high school sports, but but since we're on pause right now, in fact, the NJSIA has said um, we're, we're on pause. Even though the NCAA said we're canceling sports and the NJSIA says we're going to wait and see. And they've sa even said we'll wait until um, mid-May, late May before we actually throw in the towel. So they really want – they even said, you know, if we can have a couple weeks of a season, we're going to do that. So as an athlete, what do you feel like – what does that sound like to you, Danny? Yeah, I feel so bad for um... – the seniors and in, in high school and in college, because a lot of these uh, athletes is their last chance to, to play and not everybody's going to play in college. So, you know, I just feel terrible for them. I, I know it's just such an unknown out there that we don't know what's going to happen. So it's just, we got to wait. And uh, if they could get in a little bit of a season, I, I think it's, it's great. I'm, I'm actually a little worried about the, the fall seasons, um, football mm -hmm. season. Um, I'm hoping that that's not the case, but, um, you know, I think we're just in a, in a holding pattern and we just have to wait and see. Yeah. And your son's going to be your son. Uh, Sean is going to be a, a senior football player for Mendham next year. So I'm sure that's on your mind. Yeah, exactly. Um, so Danny, listen, man. And I, I Lloyd, I Lloyd's with us. And I, I told him this morning who was going to be on our lineup yeah. and he texted me back a couple of times. He's like, is this, did he play for John Bauer? And, uh, I'm like, oh yeah, that's why we're interviewing him. Yeah. Um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what we really want to do is, you know, you were part of that big streak that was in Randolph. Um, let me see. I'm going to try to, I think Floyd, bear with me, Danny. We're just, yeah, that's okay. um, Floyd, you dialed in two places. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm going to do my own. All right. All right. Whatever you pop up there, we'll see. Uh, anyhow, Danny, so you, one of the things we talk about a lot is we've done a lot of podcasts with some of the former players and the former, and you were part of, like, I've been talking, we talked to a lot of uh, Randolph people, including some of the, you know, Will Nahan, who's the current Randolph coach, Jimmy Pepe, who's, uh, you know, just a, a sure. total gladiator, you know, for, for Randolph. And they all know, I asked them all, I'm like, are you guys aware of that? The fact that, you know, Randolph has to be the flagship high school football school of New Jersey. I mean, it's got the greatest game that ever played, which yep. was 1990. You weren't part of that, but you were sort of part of that because that was part of the streak. At the time, Randolph was the long, had the longest um, unbeaten streak in the state. Yep. Um, and they were uh, a tick away from losing. They kicked a field goal at, at, at uh, Montclair and they had to pull off. Montclair off. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, but and that was at that that was towards the end of the streak. The streak kept on going after that. But you were uh, you were part of the, the the very first winning game of that streak, no? Yeah. So that was uh, 1986. We had won. Uh, it, it's it was a little bit of a, a strange time because we were in the Hills Division my junior year and oh, uh, the, uh, the Iron Hills Conference, and then our enrollment went up in the school. So we got moved from uh, into the iron division, my senior year. And, you know, we were playing schools that we never played before, like West Essex and Seton Hall prep, um, Morris Knowles, uh, you know, Roxbury we had played, but we, we were playing group four schools. So we didn't really know what to expect. And we went were you on a group uh, three school. Were you group three? at we the were, time? We were group three, but we moved up to group four senior okay. year. Okay. So then, you know, we we're playing these bigger schools and um, we had won our first four games that year and we went into Seton Hall prep and uh, we lost 14, 13, but that was, there he we is. Went, <laughs> went 10 and one that year. And, you know, so we had the first six games of the, of the week 
uh, my senior year. Okay. So you, you go back to so junior year. You only lost one game, Danny. No, junior year. We had actually a, not a great year as far as Randolph is concerned. We went five and four. Um, oh, is that right? It was still, uh, you know, I think we had 25 straight winning seasons. Um, and that one, you know, so, you know, we went five and four with Randolph Sanders was, was bad. And then yeah. my senior year, 10 and one with that loan loss to Seton Hall prep. But, um, you know, we had some tough games along the way there. We beat Morris Knowles seven to six, uh, East Orange 21 20, and finally beat C uh, Summit in the state championship. It was 12 uh, seven. So there were, there were some tight games that we just uh, kind of pulled out. But, um, you know, and then Randolph had some great teams, even in the 60s and 70s, and they never had an undefeated seat. And then after my senior year, we went 10 and one. The next year was their first undefeated season. They get, I think they had, what, four in a row from there, which was just yeah. uh, an amazing time period. You know, they, as you get older, you don't realize how lucky we were to have Coach Bauer and, and his son, Coach Bauer Jr., all the other coaches that just prepared us. And, you know, we were in better shape than these teams. We were Most of the times we were smaller than them. Uh, we didn't have much size, but they had a way of just getting the most out of every player where they would make an average player good, a good player great, and a great player they would make them outstanding. They just had a way of getting the most out of every kid on the team. And to play football at Randolph was – better than any class you could take. Uh, I mean, the stuff that we learned there uh, and, and you look back and anybody, we had a, a hill that we climbed to go to practice. And, you know, we used to say, you know, you got to climb the hill, climb the hill. And anybody that's ever played football knows that terminology. And, and you just have so much respect for that went through that program. And Danny, when you were like a kid, like in seventh grade, were you guys all like, we want to play for Randolph? Like at the time, did you know, how great of a coach Bauer was. Yeah, we even knew, you know, when we were in the, uh, the youth program, Coach Bauer and his staff would come down to the youth program and teach all the coaches. We, we ran the Delaware wing T on offense and wide tackle six defense, they called it. And every coach in, in the youth program had to run. Randolph's offense and Randolph's defense, and they would come down and teach it to everybody. So by the time you got to high school, you, you pretty much knew the system, and they would just tweak it however they wanted at that point, like riding a bike. I could still run that stuff today. Uh, it's ingrained in my mind. Is and, that right? Uh, <laughs> it is. Yeah, I know. It's, you know. You know, like, but, all the scores, and I mean, we're talking, like, a long time ago, Dan. You pretty much. But it's, like, remember. fun to listen to you. I mean, it's, like, one of the biggest joys in life, you can tell. Uh, it definitely was, and and you don't, you know, going through it, you don't realize it just because, you know, you're you're going through it, and, and you know it's something special, but you really look back now and say, God, we were really lucky, and I, I played football at Muhlenberg College and just talking to some of my buddies they they didn't have the experience that that I was lucky to grow so mm. Mr. Dan, I got a question. I'm sorry uh, <clears throat> I was trying to say an odd question yeah yeah go ahead Lloyd uh, I was doing some previous research and I saw that uh, Mr. Bauer Bob. always had a cigar in his hand is there a story behind that no, he just used to chomp on that thing all the time. And, you know, you got to that smell. Sometimes you smell it nowadays when you're walking down the street or something. It brings you back to the field. Uh, but he just loved cigars. He was just an old-time great coach, probably the best coach. Uh, I mean, my best coach that I ever had. But, I mean, he, he's got to go down as one of the best in, in New Jersey State history. I mean, the guy was unbelievable. When going through practice, was there something that you could remember that he always said, did, that really sticks with you now, even, you know, well, being the coach you're at? He, he was like a, uh, a Vince Lombardi disciple. And That's exactly what George said, too. He was like the old time. It's like an old school kind of coach. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's so many quotes that I still say to this day, you know, from him. And he'd have, he'd put a new one up every week on our, in our uh, locker room. 
and uh, you know, he who cannot lead or will not follow invariably obstructs. Uh, you know, just there's so many of them that over the years you just kind of get ingrained in your head. But they just um, had a system that they ran to perfection. And back then, we had a very uh, we used to practice passing game a lot. Like we'd practice like an hour a day, and mm. we but we would split out into like a, a double slot and go into the shotgun. And it was kind of before its time. No one really knew how to defend it, and we had some really good quarterbacks like uh lee salts uh, had a full ride to temple uh, greg nortolillo had a full ride to boston college these were our quarterbacks uh greg nortolillo had a full ride to boston college matt nortolillo full ride to penn state mike grow full ride to virginia uh drew willie full ride to to buffalo so they had some really good quarterbacks and we would just pick teams apart because they wouldn't know how to cover it and um mm -hmm. And, and then we'd be able to run the ball, too, because spreading them out and then we'd open up the running game. So um, just a bunch of really hard nosed. They made us tough. They they, uh, you know, mentally, we were always like spot on. They prepared us each and every week. It was funny because a lot of people watch film and they didn't really like us to watch film. It, it was different than nowadays right like yeah. they would watch they they worked so hard preparing us and they would show us stuff during the week whoever the opponent was and they didn't want us to get like a false sense of security watching film uh of the other team because they didn't want us to like you know take them for granted type thing so they didn't really want mm -hmm. to let us watch too much film they would they would um do it for us and prepare us each and every week and we were in great shape um and it was just, it's hard to explain fully, but being part of that program was, uh, it was just the best thing that probably ever happened to me. And uh -huh. I'm sure a lot of other people would say the same thing. So a lot of those concepts, even now, <clears throat> being a former football uh, high schooler, um, playing football in high school, excuse me. And a lot of those concepts are still in the same, like, you know, we watch film probably for the most two hours, uh, but we do more of on field, you know, yeah. they'll show us the offense. They'll bring us the uh, the booklet of how the offense is spread out, how the defense even looks, how linebackers will blitz, how stunts will be um, becoming. So I do speak to that. Uh, you do speak to that fact. It's true. Like, you know, a lot of it has come from old ways, but, you know, the old school yeah. is never, I mean, it's never going to beat the new school. And it's also curious to hear that you guys like started that like widespread West Coast kind of offense saying that, you know, you can do both, go uh, run up the gut or, you know, spread out and then go ahead and catch it. Yeah, because we would play teams that were a lot bigger than us. And mm. we couldn't power them, right? But we would run that misdirection uh, Delaware wing T offense and run counter. Uh -huh. And then we would spread, split them out. And these teams, a lot of the teams that were bigger back in those days, they were Oxbury, they were – they were power teams, right? They would try to grind it out and they just had a hard time stopping that passing game. And we had a, you know, we practiced it so much that you know, our quarterbacks, they had a lot of talent, but uh, all the practice that we put in and we used to run these patterns to perfection and we would open it up and then, you know, our defense would bend, but not break. And um, that's basically the, the recipe for our success. Danny, I remember you told me a couple of times, you said that uh, that your the offensive line coaches would love when there was like a big defensive lineman because they would just expose them with their technique. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so we had, uh, you know, guys on the line, 150 pounds, 160, 170, not guys, but they had, the way that they taught them to fire out and use leverage to get underneath these guys – you know, they, we had guys blocking, you know, if they had a guy 50, 60 pounds heavier, they, you know, I was talking to one of my coaches, uh, Ron Sturback. He's been coming to, uh, my son's games and, uh, he just he tired and just likes football. So he, I've been sitting with him at the games. And so he, he used to tell me, they used to like lick their chops when they would find a team that had a big <laughs> guy because they would just teach our kid how to use leverage and get underneath them and, and control the guy. So, yeah, they had a, 
you know, I was never a lineman, but th those guys fired out low and they just had this technique that, um, you know, especially with this, the Delaware wing T offense that we ran, you know, it was like a, a, you know, pulling guards and things like that. They, um, they just really taught them a, a great technique to, to power through these guys. Hmm. So Danny, listen, like you, you were, you were part of that first team. Then you went away to college. You played college football. By the time you graduated, um, where were yeah. you in the Miracle uh, Montair game? Were you still in college? Yeah, I came home for that game. Okay. Yeah, so you were there. That game is packed. Uh, <laughs> were you at that game? I was no, I actually I was at I was a sophomore at Hanover Park. We actually were having our state championship game of our own. Um, but we I remember even though we were in high school coming off the field and there was a reporter and somehow he found out what happened at Montclair because we we all wanted to know because every at the time, you know, we cared as much of what we, we you know, we wanted to know what was going on with Randolph just because yeah, they were sure. on this big streak. So we got off the field and um some guy was like, Hey, you want to hear what happened to Randolph? We're like, yeah, what happened? And then the uh he told us he said they all the Montclair guys ran on the field and they had to pull him off and then Mike Rose mm -hmm. field goal and the, yeah, I mean just so many people. It's almost like when JFK got shot, you know, like where were you on the miracle Montclair day? <laughs> it was a it was a miracle. I mean the way that the quarterback for Montclair kept getting the snap trying to run the clock out and he was dropped back like three yards. And he kept going to his knee, but it kept bringing them up on their nine yard line at that point. And then the punt just was a low line driver that uh, our punt returner caught diving to the ground with a second to go. Uh, we brought the 37 yard field goal. The place was going crazy. <laughs> I can't imagine. Mr. Dent, Mr. Dent uh, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, uh, that um, game was coached by John Bowers Jr., right? Yeah. So Coach um, Bowers died early like in the middle of that yeah. season i saw that he passed uh it says 17 days before yeah. the uh, montclair game and it's actually good so i was going to ask um break it up and say you being in the crowd you seeing how the players um were playing but also reacting on the sideline could you talk about like the emotion that you probably seen from people that were in the stands as well as his son coaching that team you know knowing his father um had passed a few days ago yeah i mean Literally, we were driving. We had the ball. We were driving down the field for winning touchdown. And we ended up fumbling. And everybody, you know, the game was basically over. Everybody thought. And, you know, just the, the circumstance came after that that I just explained mm. it was a miracle. And, you know, people said that they could – they almost made a movie about this. I had heard that there was a movie talk because people said they could smell – Bauer senior cigar, you know, I mean, it, 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 there was so many people there and the emotion from Montclair storming the field, they had to kick them all, you know, get everybody off. They put, I think there was six or seven seconds left on the clock and yeah, they, they, they were forced yeah. to punt. And, um, and then just the, you know, I could still see the picture of one of the uh, coach just jumping around in circles, uh, coach Fossey. Yeah, you know, and everybody was going on to the field and the, it was just an unbelievable, you know, and that when that was one versus two, we were number two in the state. So we ended up finishing mm. for the first time ever, number one in the state. So it was a huge deal. So, that's right. And they, they were, um, I think they were nationally ranked. There may be one in the nation or they, uh, yeah, Montclair. If you look back, they, they were huge. I mean, they had some studs on that team. And for us to stick with it and, you know, be able to slow them down and like I said, using our passing game to open up things. It was just a, it was a great team win, but the coaches really are the ones that, you know, per, without those guys, we ran off isn't what it is. So, so Dan, a lot of people said that was, that was a great game. But the, the week before at union was a seven, six game. Um, did you go to that game as well? No, I, I couldn't go. I, I think we had a, a, a game ourselves at Muhlenberg. Okay. So uh, I, I couldn't make that one. But, um, I, you know, I tried to come back as much as I could um, for some of these games. It meant a lot. And the streak was going on. I wanted to kind of be a part of it. And uh, <laughs> I would come back. 
you know, whenever I could, unless we had a game that I couldn't make. So. Yeah. And Danny was, I, a lot of people talk about John Bauer senior, senior, but I wasn't John Bauer junior kind of like the mastermind around the offense or not, or was all yeah. the coaching staff? Yeah, no, he, he was the one that was the like tactician with the passing game. Uh, so they had different personalities, but together they really gelled. And he was kind of like a, um, he was a little bit like a drill sergeant, uh, Bauer yeah. Jr., but he hmm. demanded perfection and you didn't want to let him. Do. So he, he was the one that called a lot of the plays. Yes. Is that right? And yeah. Hmm. So, you know, he <clears throat> there, uh, you know, that game without his dad there, I, I must've been tougher to coach, I would imagine, but you know, it, it was still the same program, you know, that was been around for years and doing well. So that's why, um, you know, it wasn't much different in the Montclair game, uh, you know, but if actually if Bauer Sr. could have been there, it would have been even better, but uh, what are you going to do? And Sam, so, what, what was it like? You were at college and you find out that uh, John Bauer Sr. dies, your former high school coach. What was that like getting that message? Yeah, uh, you know, back then you didn't have a cell phone, you know? Um, oh, oh, no. Get the call and uh, coming back for the wake. And, um, yeah, I mean, the place was jammed with all former players. And, uh, yeah, it was it was tough. Um, and Because we got to get, you know, his wife, you know, well. Uh, we just, unfortunately, had to go to her uh, funeral in the, in the last year. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Uh, we, you know, Sorry. it was more like, it was like a family affair, really. Um, just being a part of that program. Uh, and like I said earlier, as you get older, you appreciate more of what that actually was all about. It was like the best time of my life. Yeah. You know, what's funny, Dan, like I went to Hanover park. I wasn't part of Randolph. Um, and I know lots of other people from, you know, doing what I do. I know for people from Booton and Mountain Lakes and Sparta, you know, and all these schools and they all, you know, it, it all feels like, you know, Randolph is in our backyard. They're like the flat and we're so proud of Randolph. You know what I mean? Like, People are like, hey, where do you, you know, right now in this day and age, everybody cares about like the big Bergen, you know, parochial schools, uh, Bergen sure. Catholic, uh, Don Bosco, uh, St. Joe's, and, you know what I mean? Um, but, you know, everyone has so much pride around that Randolph era, you know what I mean? Um, well, it, even people that didn't go to that school. It's nice, you know, listen, we were Morris County School. It's nice to have the support of other towns, even though they didn't go there, but, you know, I could see that some people were probably jealous of Randolph back then. I mean, I, I could see it, but it, it's nice to say that um, because, you know, we're playing all the same schools as everybody else. And to have that support is nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I, re I remember that year because we won the state championship. We won 11 and 0 and yeah. we were a great team. And, um, you know, we kept on saying, and I was, a you know, I won the record for uh, bringing the water back and forth from the, uh, you know, <laughs> the locker room to the field. Um, but I remember, look, I'm like, I can't imagine us losing to Randolph. You know what I mean? And, and I've talked to some of those Randolph guys and, uh, you know, I think we would have gave them a run for the money, but, uh, you know, it might've been, might been a good game, but we were a group two school. And, uh, you know, looking back, they were so well coached. And um, I remember they were whipping, you were talking about how they used to pass the ball and, yeah. um, you, back then, they, you didn't see people pass the ball, and they would pass the ball, and it was just so gutsy. Like you're, it seems so risky. But I remember you telling me that you guys would practice that, like, like you, like passing was almost like running for you guys, right? Yeah, it was the first hour of practice. Uh, every practice was an hour of passing game. Is that right? So I mean, you know, they they had us prepared uh, very well, and without that. Randolph isn't what it is, you know. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, well, hey Dan, man, I appreciate you giving us a little uh, little insight to the, uh, the John uh, Bauer Randolph lore, bro. And I know my Randolph buddies, and I can tell you that just from a Randolph perspective, that those, um, you know, even Jimmy Peppy and Justin Towns and the current players, they I asked them, and they're like, no, we know all about that. And even though they were not even a, a glimpse of being born, you know, they really take pride in being part of that. So just from your from a legacy yeah. standpoint, that lives on, bro. Yeah, they're starting to, um, you know, get back to, you know, they 
teams. So uh, hopefully they can do the same. Yeah, I can tell you, Will Nahan, Randolph football is in great hands with that guy, Danny. So just so you know. That's great. <laughs> I'm happy to hear. I want to ask Dan, Dan, how's, how's, uh, how's your family doing with everything? Everything's good. So the girls are home from college. Uh, Katie's home from Fairfield and Kelly's home from Scranton. And uh, it's been actually kind of nice having them around, even though I know they'd be having more fun at school. But, uh, you know, we're watching a new movie every night. And uh, <laughs> we're, I think we're all probably doing the same. Yeah, it's been. No, I know you're such a big hit too today in business. Do you mind like just taking a minute and telling us a little bit about what you do professionally today? Sure. Uh, so I'm part of uh, O'Dowd Bureau of Health Advisors in Morristown and do financial uh, manage money for individuals and small businesses. And we do uh, life insurance, uh, life health, long term care, disability insurance. And we put together financial plans for clients just to you know, so we can keep track of, uh, you know, retirement money and things like that. How are you guys operating today business-wise? Just, you know. Um, it's just over the phone mostly now. Um, uh -huh. Are you doing Zoom meetings if you need to or? Yeah, yeah. And especially with the market, you know, it's up today. Nice. Um, it's up big, but, you know, it's been going crazy to the downside. So, but everybody seems to. Uh, kind of understand and, and they're hanging in there. It hasn't been as bad as it was in like 2008. Mm, yeah. So uh, people, kind of in it, you know, we'll get through this and. Um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll get through this. Be yeah, safe we'll, and well. It's really good to see you. I really love Beth and I never see her, but when I do, it's great, you know, yeah, to just catch up and say hi and your, and your kids too, because all our kids kind of played sports together. So it's great to yeah. catch up with you and see you. Congratulations on Rhode Island. That's great. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. thanks. Uh, Thank you well, so hey, much. Andy, man, love the, uh, the, the, the the trips back in time a little bit, and we'd love to have you on again, bud. Appreciate you having me. Thanks. Yep, thank you. All right, Danny, we'll let you, we'll let you go. And uh, you. in the meantime, we'll, we have enough, our next segment is uh, – see you, Danny. Our next segment is uh, all about Pope John. Um, so we're going to bring on uh, uh, the coach and a couple of players and – as we do that, as we kind of bring them on, um, we will highlight a few of our uh, loyal sponsors, including Astute Academics. We just had Mike Schelling uh, on, uh, did a fantastic job uh, talking a little bit about all the things that they do for, for high school athletes and test prep. And uh, the Orthopedic Institute of New Jersey with locations in Morris Plains and Newton and Cedar Knolls and uh, Succasunna, uh, Sparta, and Haggistown. All your orthopedic needs, the County College of Morris, European Wax, Ivy Rehab with locations five minutes from every Morris Sussex High School, and of course, St. Francis Residential Facility. And as we bring on our next guest, who I'm really excited about, give some love to, uh, um, to Pope John Tennis. Right now, they're in a holding pattern. These, this, is the why, this is the reason why we have this show. We got a recognize these athletes they've been waiting to to uh get things cooking um all winter long as soon as it starts warming up we get the coronavirus pandemic and uh, a lot of these athletes and teams got a got a uh you know they're kind of in a holding pattern right now so i want to bring in uh uh coach chad are you with us uh yeah i'm here okay great hey coach how are you i'm gonna good how are you good we're, we're bringing on your team here so bear with us a second um, got James and Michael O'Raw here. So uh, let's see here. All right. So we have that. Chad, we got your video. Thanks for coming on. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. And bear with Thanks us. We're bringing us. on Mike. Michael, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. Now I'm just bringing on James as well. So uh, let's see here. All right. There's Michael. Welcome, welcome to the show. I'm gonna, Thank you. I'm going to introduce everybody in just a second. We'll bring on uh, – get James over here. Um, you guys getting familiar with Zoom? <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've been using it a lot in school. Okay. That's all we use in school. Is that <laughs> I wish I – Oh, and he got one. the AirPods on. Oh, he coming on. <laughs> <Nancy>. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, everybody. I think we're gonna have. Uh, I think James is coming on, so we're gonna go around the go horn around the horn and introduce everybody. Um, so uh, we got James and Michael O'Raw from uh, from Pope John Tennis. Thanks, guys, for coming on along with your coach. No problem. Chad. Chad, how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, Gasoric. Gasoric. Okay. <laughs> um, and then just so you guys know, on our side we have. Uh, myself, George Muha with Morris Essex Sports, Karen Muha with Morris Essex Sports, as well as Lloyd Wilson from Lo uh, Morris Essex Sports. Um, Lloyd is a uh, is a broadcaster, um, done a lot of play by play for us, and uh, part part of our we got a three three person panel here. So um, anyhow, this is all about you guys. You know, we created this show. We'd much rather be outside covering you guys. We do a lot of play by play broadcasts and articles and all that stuff, but. Uh, you know, because of what we're in, we're, 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 we created this show really to kind of recognize the spring athletes, the spring teams. So, um, you know, I appreciate you coming on because we want us to know, we know you were preparing. We want to know what, what you had coming into this season. So, um, Chad, I'll start with you. You kind of came into this season raring to go. You had a week of practice. And then all of a sudden, what was that, that week week like and then delivering that message to your team that you kind of had to put everything on pause um well it was tough you know um we came out like you said raring to go um the guys were doing a great job you know we got some good freshmen come in and um i had all my top three singles players come back from last year and um you know we had a real good uh feeling and, and a good opportunity to win our hws this year um, which would have big, been a big feat for us, um, you know, and do well in our league, you know. And, um, you know, Mike and James were working hard in the off season, um, you know. And, again, this was my second season, uh, consecutive season with the team. I had coached Pope John uh, back in 2009 through 11. And, uh, um, you know, um, I coached them for three seasons. And then – uh, another coach came in and took my place and whatnot, but um, it was a real great opportunity because the school that I coach for at Sussex Tech, they don't have a boys team right now. So, um, you know, I knew uh, Mia Gavin and, um, you know, she said she was looking for a coach and, you know, I, I came on board again and um, I was really happy with the, with, with the team that I have, you know, um, and it's a real quick, funny story is I actually met these guys the previous year um, cause I was a tennis official during the spring season. So they were doing the HWS tournament up in Vernon. And I saw these two boys play and I said to myself, Oh my God, I wish I had had the opportunity to coach these two, you know, cause I really think I can help their game, you know? And, um, and lo and behold, the following year I got the phone call and I was jumped at it, you know? So, um, but as far as this season is going, it, you know, I really feel bad for them because, you know, James had won the HWS at second singles last year. And um, uh, Michael, I believe, finished fourth. He, he made it to the semifinals. And then, you know, we had it. And then the boys who, um, who were on those teams last year, they graduated out. So we were getting the top three returners back uh, with Patrick uh, Lewicki. And, um, you know, I was really excited. They were really excited. You know, the whole team was excited about what was going on. And then also I had a really uh, very strong um, uh, doubles player with Tony Lee, who was an exchange student from China. So they obviously had to send him home. And so he's out for the rest of the season. Um, and he, he was, a, I believe he was a junior. So I don't even know if we'll get him back next year. Is that right? So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he was a junior. Yeah. yeah. And you guys were coming in and, and um, you know, you're coming into the season. And when you look at the season, Chad, from a coach's perspective, do you look at it and say, okay, we have the conference, we have the more uh, the uh, HWS tournament and states. You kind of break them down into those kind of categories or, you know, how do you look at it when you're kind of coming in from a, from a coaching standpoint? Yeah, I, I try to, you know, you know, I, I try to do it as like one match at a time. You know, um, I don't like to look too far ahead, but of course, you know, human nature, we all do. Um, but I do try to break it down into league. And then, of course, you know, the HWS and then, yeah, states. Um, 
you know, um, and there's, you know, as far as teams go, you know, we know that South Jersey has very, very strong teams and um, try not to even worry about them until the time comes, you know? So, um, you know, we're just trying to get through this, this COVID uh, 19 and, and hopefully get an opportunity to get these guys on the, uh, on the courts so they can show what they can do. And, you know, hopefully these seniors finish out their year. Mr. Yeah. Chair. Oh, go ahead, Mr. George. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, uh, this is Lord Wilson. I just wanted to go uh, from outside looking in, um, you know, I never played tennis. So I'm actually curious to hear what are, um, what is a routine tennis practice like? What do you guys do? How do you guys prepare? Um, Mike, you want to answer that or you want me to do that? Uh, I can answer it. <laughs> I want right. to hear it from my player's point of view. <laughs> okay, I don't mean to so, put you on the spot, but let's, let's, let's nah, it's all good. It's all good. So uh, we usually run a couple laps on the court. It's called a snake run where we run the lines on each tennis court. We do that for about three courts. And then we do that coming back just to warm up the blood and stuff like that. So then after that, we do a little bit of stretching and then we stretch like every muscle in our body and stuff like that, the arms, the legs, everything back, stuff like that. And then once we finish that, we kind of do suicides by the key aspects that we move in tennis, like side shuffling, karaoke, backpedaling, and then obviously moving forward. And then once we finish with that, we sprint down through the whole courts, all five courts, and then once we've, like we do it in a race style. So there's two people going and then we have a race just to keep that friendly competition in at the same time. You know what I mean? Mm. So after we finish that, we do, I'm not sure if you know what Indian runs are. So okay, yeah, we, yeah, we do Indian <laughs> runs after all, all around all five courts twice. Okay. And then after that we finish and then that's when we grab our rackets and start warming up. How much would you stress technique? Um, in tennis, it's not just whacking a racket and hitting the ball wherever <laughs> wherever it goes. Because the most I could probably relate to is ping pong. I mean, that's just the most I could probably get it. You know, someone that's not that's, um, that doesn't play the sport. So um, yes, technique is very important in when it comes to tennis. Like, there's obviously different like techniques and stuff like that throughout the whole game. But just to get like the whole gist of it, like swinging through that ball and making sure you're following through over your shoulder and things like that. That's like very key aspects that you want to make sure you have while you're playing tennis and stuff like that. Mm. And and both you guys were coming into the season with some high, are you guys twins? Uh, no, no. Um, I'm not. a year and a half older. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, coming into the season, you come into, you know, you have high hopes. What, what, you know, what has it been like? And I'm curious, like the, I've been telling this to all the athletes, like from an athlete standpoint, you know, the, the NJSIA canceled the season, you know, Olympics postponed to next year. The NJSIA has held up hope in saying, if we're able to have any kind of a season, we're going to do it. And they even said like, we're not going to make really a decision until like the middle of May. What does that sound like to you, Michael and James as athletes? Um, when you heard that message? Well, I'd say that, um, it's probably that, like, at least it gives us hope that there is – that hopefully we do get to play. But you also – but, like, in my case, I'm still preparing in case that this season gets canceled. I'm ready for the next season that much better. Mm, yeah. How about you, Michael? So, for me, it's a little bit tougher since, like, I could have won counties, like, this year, since the previous three years, I've had to play really good opponents in counties. And this is my one year where they have all graduated. So this is my only opportunity to win counties and then be the first in history of Pope John to actually win counties. And as a team perspective, we had a really good chance of winning the whole counties in itself. So that's where it kind of hurts me a little bit because we could have won counties and we could have made history. And then for me, like I came in like off a pretty good season last year, but I knew my opponents. 
So throughout the summer, I was training for like five hours a day, preparing of what I needed to do to beat the opponents that I'd lost to. So I came in with really high hopes and knowing that I was going to do really well. And then once I heard that, it kind of like hurt me a little bit. But at the same time, since there's hope, it like it makes me want to train even more. So I'm that much more prepared if the season continues or starts up. Yeah. And this is your se senior season, right, Michael? I mean, that's gotta, yeah, it's got to be a tough blow. And do you play any, any other sports besides tennis? No, just tennis. OK. And your brother, James, you play football as well, correct? I do. I do. OK. Yeah. So, I mean, you have, you know, a couple of seasons, you have football and you're young, you have some time. But uh, that's kind of a, a, yeah. a little bit of a transition, right? Being, you know, playing football and tennis. is. Do you find, um, you know, one helps the other, James? Oh, yeah, definitely. Tennis definitely helps me with my movement skills. I'd imagine. So yeah. tennis also helps me with my visual because, I mean, seeing a ball, it goes faster and it helps me, like, see where everything's going. And it's different from seeing a player, which is, like, a lot bigger than seeing a ball. <laughs> so then it definitely works. So much then it much definitely more helps intense, me. I bet. It definitely helps, like, both because even one of my coaches told me that I do, like, because of football, I moved to places faster than what I did before football. Mm -hmm. I, I'd imagine you had a lot of that side-to-side -side movement, um, which can translate well on, in really any sport. Um, and um, co Coach, can you talk a little bit about um, just Pope John in general? It seems like, you know, Pope John has really come on in every single sport. Um, in the last uh, several years, and I and, and I, it doesn't matter really what sport I go to. I it seems like Monsignor is always at the sideline, always whether it's track or whatever. He's always seems to be there. He's a big sports fan. Can you talk a little bit about what what it's like to be a coach and have you know kind of that kind of sports school mentality? Um, yeah, you know, um, the one thing I I really appreciate about Pope John is that. You know, the students and the athletes are expected to act the same way on the courts or on the fields as they do in class. You know, um, I have 100 percent port from Mia Gavin. Um, you know, I mean, kids are kids. They're going to, you know, they're going to talk. They're going to, you know, um, crack jokes. It, you know, it's kind of a release for them. But, um, you know, coaching there is um is definitely a great opportunity. You know, Pope John, back in the day, even when I went to school, at because I, I, I grew up in, uh, um, you know, I went to Sussex Tech. Um, at, the, at that time, it was called the SCIL. And Pope John was a powerhouse in everything, you know. And, um, you know, just like, I, I think what has happened over the past few years, um, since I graduated high school, which was many moons ago, um, you know, um, more kids or more families haven't, haven't been able to, you know, send their kids to Pope John They're they're finding out that, you know, public education is, is, is good. And, you know, Pope John hasn't been getting all the elite athletes that they used to, but we're still getting the kids that come in and they're working extremely hard. Um, you know, they're trying to keep all their programs at the highest level because we have to play the highest level teams because we're a parochial school, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, you know, it's it's a great opportunity. You know, I love the game of tennis. You know, I'm not going to lie. If my school had a boys tennis team, I would coach there. Um, but I'm glad I have the opportunity to coach these boys because, you know, they, they play at a level that um, – you know, is not from scratch, you know, I'm not, you know, I coach the girls team at Sussex Tech and I have to start with kids who've never even held a tennis racket, mm. you know, and I get them at Pope John as well, but, you know, um, you know, it's just, it's, it, it really, none of these kids are actually going to go and play a U.S. Open, if I'm going to be honest, but they play at a high enough level to where, you know, they understand the terms and they understand why we do so much footwork and, you know, when Michael was talking before about, you know, how practice goes and things like that, it's a lot more intense than how he was explaining it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I mean, he, he did explain it to an extent, but um, these guys work their butts off, you know, yeah. they're sweating, they're sweating by the time, you know, intense, 10 minutes coach. is up. I'm sorry. 
It sounded intense, Coach. It didn't sound like it was easy. Yeah. It didn't sound easy at all. Those Indian runs are not easy. What, what a lot of people don't understand, you know, what a lot of people don't understand about high school tennis is that we are one of the few sports, I think one of only two, probably golf being the other one, where there's no officials. We don't have an official at every match and in every court. And these guys not only have to worry about what shot they're going to make getting into position, they got to make their own calls. They got to keep their own score, you know, and a lot of it is, is based on, um, you know, being ethical and, you know, and fair, the right call, you know, and, um, and these guys, you know, and girls, when they play, they have a lot going on at the court at the same time. So, you know, tennis to me is one of the most difficult sports out there, not only to play, but to coach. You yeah. know, we have certain amount of time to actually coach them during a match. We can only coach them on a changeover, you know. So, hmm. um, you know, it, it gets it gets very difficult. You know, there's a lot going on. And not to mention, if you have five courts strung next to each other, if my doubles team is playing down the other end of the court and I got to coach them on a changeover and I'm speaking to Michael, yeah, I got to have my running shoes on that day. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, you know, and, and James, you've been, you know, you play tennis, um, you know, and it's kind of one of those things where you're, you know, a lot of times if you're, if it's a singles, you're playing one-on-one, -on -one. do you have like, um, t you know, at players that you, uh, you know, that you grind against, that you look forward to playing, you know, every, you know, kind of like those uh, rivalries. Yeah. Uh, you know, I definitely who, have one against, um, what is it? West, Westmore Central. Central. Westmore Central. Westmore Central. That's what okay. it is. Like last year, I think that was one of the only people I've ever lost to. So it would be like great to play them again. Yeah. And, and what's, what's the tennis, uh, you know, you know, it's funny, some sports, you know, you battle out on the field, then afterward you kind of hug it out. You need know, like, you know, what's what's it like for tennis when you have those individual battles? Uh, the same kind of thing. I'd say it's the same thing. Like you know, at the end of the match, you say, "Oh, you like have a little conversation," but then there's just sometimes where it's like you can't even talk to them because like you just beat them or you just lost to them that you know you should have won. So you'd like <laughs> mad at yourself. So yeah. Yeah, there's nothing. Like I want to ask you guys a question too. We have a we have a senior athlete. So Michael, this might be like more directed to you. We have a senior who's a a softball player. So she was saying to me today, as a matter of fact, she said, "All I need, mom, is one game. Just one game is all I, you know." Do you do you feel like that? Would that that be like satisfactory to you if you got that chance just to play one more time? Yeah, especially on a team like a team like Pope John's, since it's such a good envir environment, it's so happy to play on. Like no matter what, we're always joking around. Even if we lose a match as a whole, or if we win a match as a whole, obviously we're going to be joking around. But it's just like everyone's so supportive. Like I remember one time. I was playing Morris Hills and it was one of the longest matches I've ever had. It was a three and a half hour match. And like the entire Pope John team was like right on the gate, just cheering me on. And then when I would change over, they would go to the other side while some of the more, uh, the Morris Hills people were just sitting there on their phones and just not really paying attention to the long battle. And it, this match that I was playing was actually for the whole match as a whole. So it's just having that people, those people just stand there and say, come on, Michael, come on, Michael, and stuff like that. It's just a good environment to play on. You know what I mean? Uh. Yeah. Do you, you guys also too, I mean, are you able right now, you guys are lucky that your brothers, you can keep the game going. I mean, are you out there now? I don't think there's a net like in a community. Is that right? There, it, yeah, you no, know, we usually play um... over at CCM. Like, CCM has their courts open, as far as I know. Like, I haven't been there in two days because I've was been i been working for the past couple of days. But, yeah, like, every time, every chance we get to go out, we just go out and just play for, like, two hours or something like that just to get that urge, you know, because we're so used to playing every single day for at least two, three hours. So just by sitting at home, 
just like doing homework and stuff like that, obviously. But after that, it's just like we have something to scratch. And by not playing tennis, it's just like you always get so antsy by the end of the night. It's like, what like haven't I done to make me tired and stuff like that? You know what I mean? Right. I was going to ask you guys, um, what have you guys been doing during this quarantine? Like in ways of staying in shape? I mean, if you guys are on social media, you know, you've seen all the challenges that's been coming up. How you guys been keeping active? Well, we, we mostly we keep active by just playing tennis with each other because since we're like so evenly matched, it's not like one's bored and then one's like kind of sad because they're being beat up on like we're so evenly matched it's like we can go back and forth back and forth and then it becomes like a little friendly competition at the end and then we're always dripping in sweat we usually bring like two or three pairs of shirts because James and I sweat a lot even (laughs) if it's not really really hot like we're just natural sweaters so we're always dripping sweat at the end and it's just like a nice feeling at the end of the day you know yeah James, if you if you play ten matches against Michael, how many how many are you winning? It's some like Don't he doesn't like. Sometimes it, it's like a 50-50, but sometimes it depends on like who's like like you know who's doing better that day. Because sometimes you can have a really good day, and sometimes you can have a really bad day, and then it just depends. And then when we're both having a good day, it's always like a 50-50. Uh, I, James, I set you up. I set you up so good. I set you up so easy, man. Uh, I like. I would say that, but like, it's just like one of those things where it's like I gotta come out clean. <laughs> All right. This very, is a, very fair question. Very fair answer. It's a. <clears throat> it's a question for all. Uh, all of them. I was, it was curious to hear from Coach said that there's no officials or referees at these games i'm curious to see like how is the determining like what's the determining factor then and has there ever been any uh discussions has there ever, ever been any like uh moments where you had to really step in and say no 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 that's my guy's point or anything like that um there are certain things that um you know technically they're the players are supposed to work it out themselves um, you know, if they can't work it out, then they have to go to the previous point and play the point back over again. Um, you know, as far as if the coach and I, you know, there's unwritten rules there. And if, you know, if the coach and I are watching it and we see it, you know, if I see a bad call that's made by my team, I'll call, I'll make that call. I'll tell mm-hmm. them, no, that ball, that ball was in, you know, point goes to them, you know, and it may get my guy a little upset or angry, but you know, um, I would expect that the other team would do it as well. You know, um, they're usually pretty good about working things out on the court. And that's, that's the other thing that, you know, that I, like I was saying before, there's no officials. So yeah, they, they have to, they have to know the rules. They have to know a lot of rules, you know, um, for example, double bounces. If a ball double bounces on my player side and the other player stops playing, and my guy makes a shot on it, if he believes he made the ethical or legal shot on it, that's our point. The person hitting the double bounce, it's actually their call, which a lot of people don't know, you know? So, um, you know, having to know all those rules and, and things like that is, is a, it's also a lot of stress on the players, you know? So there's not many times that the coaches really can get involved in, in um, shot calling or anything like that. If there's that big of a discrepancy through the match, the players can call both coaches onto the court and, you know, basically officiate that match. If we see that the tensions are getting high, we'll do that for a couple games and then we'll back off and say, hey, listen, you guys got it from here. Because having the coaches stand there, you know, it just adds extra tension, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, they're not used to having that. So, um, but they're usually really good about, you know, working it out and talking it through. Do you go over the rules and regulations all before a match and before the season to make sure your guys are up to speed? Well, we go, yeah, I try to go through as much of the important stuff as I get things that they're going to really come into that are going to come into play like a double bounce, um, like foot faults, um, which we really don't call a lot of foot faults, but, um, you know, uh, let's say, uh, or a let, 
a let is when another ball or something comes through the court while the players are playing. So if their hat falls off, that's a let. The point stops, they play it over. Now, if it falls off again, it's a loss of point by the person who was wearing the hat. So mm -hmm. I usually wait for situations to happen, like during practice and things like that, to try to cover that. Um, but I also try to instill in the guys that, you know, hey, listen, pick up a rule book, go on YouTube, watch tennis on TV. You know, there's a lot of stuff that you can pick up by just watching tennis, you know, and I tell them, don't watch the tennis, watch the players, watch the players footwork, watch what they're doing, how they're moving, you know, and um, some of the guys do it and some of them don't, you know, but, um, you know, like I said, they, you know, if you're playing tennis, a lot of them are getting a, a good, um, uh, you know, they're, they're setting themselves up to, to learn the rules and things like that. Yeah. Mm. You guys, is a match three sets? Uh, yes, it's best two school? out of three. Two, best two out of three, yeah. Yes. Well, you guys sound like you're ready to go. You guys, you guys <laughs> get to, well, you do. I mean, you're lucky. Yeah, we you are very lucky. You're playing the game through this. Yeah, the most unfortunate thing is that we we just we can't practice together, you know, and and um, you know we just got to count on and hope that all the other guys are trying to do something, you know. I even cleaned out a coach. A you could meet basement. them at a community field. What's that? You could meet them at a, like a community location. I can't. You can't was, now. No. Oh, no. you could not. You're absolutely right. What am I yeah. saying? <laughs> yeah. But I think in time, like it'll be easier for you guys because you're not like a, you're not you're not like a team of you know forty guys like like lacrosse because right. we've talked to a lot of lacrosse guys and baseball and softball obviously too. It'll be not, you know you guys are spread out um, on a huge. Well, no, you're not really spread out, are you? No, oh, really. I mean, we have, have, what do you have, four tennis courts? We have five at Pope John, okay. um, you know, so we can get a lot of players, you know, you need, you need um, 17 total players to, to field the JV and a varsity team. Um, we do three singles and two doubles on varsity. And then on okay. JV, we do five sing or uh, five doubles, you know, so that's 17 players and, you know, um, we have plenty of, of room, um, but when we get last year, we had quite a few players and, um, you know, not everybody, you know, you have to split the courts and have them do mini tennis and things like that, you know, but um, yeah, I hope we can get back soon and, and get these guys playing because they really deserve the opportunity to, um, to be able to showcase what, what they've, uh, you know, for Michael, a four year culmination you know, what he, he, uh, he can accomplish. Yeah. I think the most exciting thing so far is that they haven't called it off. Yeah. 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 No, that's Still like a possibility. I'm, I'm yeah. excited yeah. for you guys for that one, that yeah. one yeah. poor guy that you're just going to mutilate. Him, maybe, right. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, Michael, what's your plans for next year? Um, so I'm actually going to be going to uh, CCM. And oh, just kind of continue you. working. Okay. Because, like, play? I work at my tennis court. Well, CCL, unfortunately, doesn't have a tennis team. They used to, but they don't anymore. So I'm just going to keep playing at my tennis club since I work there and stuff like that. Okay, that's cool. That's great. Well, hey, um, guys, thanks so much for coming on. Again, we have this show. We really wanted to ha uh, have it for – to honor all you, all the spring athletes, as many spring athletes and teams as possible. So um, we appreciate you, Coach, giving some love. Rooting to the you on, yeah. Well. We're excited for you guys. And, uh, Thank, hopefully, you. Thank you. Hopefully Thank you. this blows over and we can have some semblance of a team. We'd love to see you guys out there. Yeah. Mm, yep. Um, Thank hopefully you. get out there. We'll keep in touch and let you know how we're doing. Good. Sounds great, Thank guys. You, Coach. All right. Be all safe right. and well. Thank you. Right. You, yeah, you too as well. All right, and we thank the Pope John uh, tennis team for coming on. Again, we'd love for them to, to be out there playing, and uh, we'll let them go. See you guys. Um, yes. and, uh, you know, Lloyd, Lloyd and Karen, you know, uh, you know, kind of a, an interesting show. We talked to Danny Beardle and Randolph football.
kind of talked about the olden days when there was plenty of uh, plenty of going on. Really a cool, cool season. I mean, and Lloyd, I know you're a football guy and a basketball guy, but uh, you know the, the, that that team, that Randolph team, is really like the Green Bay Packers of the you know Vince Lombardi's Green Bay Packers of the early NFL. You know what I mean? Um, just a lot of history and lore with that coach Bauer and stuff. And then you have this this Pope John tennis team. Just my heart just goes out to these to these uh, kids, especially the seniors. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, the seniors in all sports all over the world are just being, you know, cut short of their season. You know, some uh, scholarships were on the line, some potential film. You know, you never know. Like you know, you want to see these kids on the big stages and see what they can do and see how they can produce and see if they can go to the next level, but. You know, hopefully everything boils over. We, like you said, boils over. But we just need sports back in general. You know, being in the house every day with nothing on TV to watch besides Netflix and Hulu. I mean, eventually it's going to run out. Who said it though, Lloyd? Somebody said like we've been watching a movie every night. Dan said it on a map. Yeah, we didn't, um, we didn't was, get him to tell us which ones. Oh uh, yeah, we didn't. Even, yeah, we did more. I that would have yeah. been a good question. Why don't we ask? He's probably watched some really good ones. I guess we can only guess, like, since his, he said his daughters were home from um, Scranton and Fairfield, I believe. Uh, maybe family films? Maybe. <laughs> I mean, maybe his I daughters got, got him to watch some uh, some chick flicks. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> so, you know, but, you know, like he says, he's just happy to have his family um, in the house. You know, Yeah, safe. just talking to Dan. You asked some really good questions, too, Lloyd. You could feel the energy, can't you? A Thank man you. talking about something that happened so many years ago, but it just brings like so much joy to the guy's life. And just listening to him, I mean, the Orthopedic Institute in New Jersey is one of our biggest sponsors and we absolutely love them. Dr. White is always standing there right on the sidelines. As a matter of fact, the last time I think I saw him was at Randolph. Um, Dr. William Sadie was with us, Dr. Ashley Bassett. Um, who else did we have on? Dr. Corrigan talked about uh, different ways in which you could take care of your hand and your wrist and different surgeries that he does. And all of these doctors from OINJ are operating virtually. Isn't that true, George, right now? Um, yeah, yes, definitely. Um, and, uh, you know, and they're a big sponsor of, of what we're doing. So I've got to give them a big shout out. Um, and, uh, and Lloyd, you know, I... Thanks so much for, you know, I know you're, you're down in uh, South Jersey, you know, you're out rowing, you went to CCM and, and Lloyd, you know, the athletes that are listening, they need to watch what you did. I mean, the, the students, the college students, they have to watch what you're doing. It's such a smart thing. You want to be a broadcaster. I told Danny Burrows, this kid's going to be on ESPN. Um, and the reason Lloyd is you're taking, you're so smart. You're taking advantage of every little opportunity to, uh, to build your resume with Morris Sussex Sports, with CCM. Now you're down at Rowan. Can you tell a little bit about what you're doing with Rowan, with their production uh, side of things? So with Rowan right now, they did tell us we have to uh, come home. So mm -hmm. we moved out, I want to say about two weeks ago. So when we moved out, I mean, it was already starting, like I was telling you beforehand, the radio um, TV network their uh, athletic club, I talked to their athletic uh, director saying that, you know I mean, get more involved in the broadcast, like broadcasting, all kinds of sports, Pre predominantly, you know, basketball and football for me. But when you want to do any, like when you want to do broadcast in general, you want to just get a feel of all kinds of sports. That's why I was asking whatever we could with, um, with coach and his players on what is tennis, you know, the terminology, obviously is something you have to learn, but, you know, just getting aware of the sport, you want to know everything like that. Uh, also with Rowan, I was getting involved with what we call the WIT. That's like their uh, um, their newspaper, uh, their newspaper um, part of the uh, part of the um, campus. Yep. And it was uh, the, school, the school newspaper. School newspaper, and the, well, last thing was the radio station. You know, we had to take a test. We went through about eight, six to eight week training, and we even had a, a written test that we had to take home. Um, and then we have to take a, an in-studio test, which uh, I don't know how it's going to be now since, you know, we uh, are home now. So, you know, next semester it was going to be, it's going to be a ride. But, you know, we're, we're all trying to, you know, just navigate through like this, 
new way of schooling, like whether it be Zoom, whether it be virtual. So we're all just trying to figure out, but definitely was getting getting involved with uh, Rowan's uh, broadcast program over there. Yeah, and you're, uh, and I know they have some connections to the Eagles too, don't they? Do they have like they internships have, with them? They have, we have something called, every Monday is called Pizza with the Pros. We have guys that's within the industry always coming down, it's every Monday. You know, um, Pizza with the Pros, you know, the first word you hear is pizza, so it's free food. So, um, that really attracts you, but you know, also like who they bring. They don't bring, you know, guys that you don't hear of. It's more like if you really are interested in your major and you want to see who does it at the highest level, these are guys that you can literally Google search and their names, um, face, bio, biography will all pop up. And, you know, getting to see those guys every Monday, uh, every week, you know, those are connections right there. You got guys um, play, by, play by play for the Brooklyn Nets. Um, advertising for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, we had play-by-play -play for the uh, Sixers. We had wow. a, uh, a marketing, a marketing specialist for uh, what's the baseball to the Phillies. You know, we have guys that really come down and really are open to helping college students. Like they really want to help because they're for, some of them are former students, um, are alumni, former um, students, so they know yeah. everything going through right now they know how important it is to really get an internship um to really just be in contact with these guys so every as soon as i was going to peace with pros i got a ton of emails just always want to reach out always want to make sure because you never know you never know um your name is going to pop up you never know what name is going to pop and say hey i know him or, 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 or i know her hey, um lloyd that's so smart you know we you know we know a lot of uh a lot of college kids, you know, you know, kids who graduate college will reach out to us with resumes and stuff. And it's amazing how many kids do not have internships, you know, while they're in college. And like when you graduate college, you really want to like step into a job. And if you don't have internships, then you're kind of like really um, hampering yourself. And, uh, you know, what do you say to those kids? I mean, it seems like you've taken advantage of that with CCM, you know, working with their, their uh, broadcasting, their basketball. I mean, they didn't even have a, well, don't, a broadcasting boy, wouldn't you say, like, CCM? Go ahead, Karen. I was just going to say, Lloyd, don't you think, like, CCM set you up so good? Uh, they did. That was you know, a great they, start, don't you think? They did. And it's, you know, it's the smart, to me, financially, it's be, like the best way to go um, before going to a four year. Like, CCM really didn't promote as much as like their broadcast program, I um, like George was saying, like they didn't really have it. So I had to like step up to it. So like the whole lounge with Lloyd I had there with the commentating for broadcast, uh, for um, broadcasting, you know, the, you, um, the utilities are there. Like everything is there that you need. It's just up to the student to really, you know, speak up and say like, listen, this is what I want to do. And there's numerous people, there's numerous people within the school that are um, willing to help you. So I think I they're like fantastic like that. I, I just went back and yeah. I thought they were just great that way. When yeah. it came to like any need I had, you know, did I get it? Do I know what I'm doing? And you're, you're kind of saying that too. If you, if you've got to focus and you know where you want to go, they are, they are so helpful in getting you there. Don't you think? Yes. You just come with an idea, come with a game plan and, you know, they're willing to help because, like I said, they have everything they, they um that you need there. Um, for my program or for my major, they had a studio, they had cameras, they had everything that I need. You know, um, all you had to do was just reach out. The athletic director, um, Jack Sullivan, he was right there behind me, everything I was doing. So, you know, and he said, anytime that I need to come back and you know refer to him or come back to him, you know, he said you're more than welcome. It's just a lot of there's a lot of good people there. Yeah, I feel like CCM, they really believe in you. They really believe in like our success and helping. I mean, here I am like a mom going back to school, you know, and I felt like, oh my God, I, you know, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. And they were just so wonderful to me. And I can't say enough good things about them. And just like all you kids, we've met a lot of ton, a ton of like great interns, you know, you being one of them. And it's so wonderful to watch you you know, grow and like you got, you know, something that you really want to do. And it's because of a great start. 
and you're not like in debt you know you're not like oh my god um, yeah, it's, I'm going to be a lot better off than, you know, some other kids. Some other kids, you know, but, you know, some other kids have that luxury to go and, you know, go to whatever school they want to, you know, with me. Right. I, have, I think every kid gets to make their own choice. Yeah. You know, me, you kind of lay it out them. there. Well, mm -hmm. we wish you, George and I wish you all the luck in the world. Thank well, you. Great thank to have you here today. Thank you. Uh yeah. Mr. Mu, oh, he said he just called you George. Uh, yeah, Mr. Muha is like some guy that lives down the shore. That's like my father. Like, I'm George. Um, <laughs> uh, what, who's our? Well, when's the next time we're gonna be on? We're we're on tomorrow. We're on tomorrow. Let's we'll keep you we'll keep you flowing in. Okay, bud. We need you. Uh, we want to keep all the guys that work with us. We want to keep you plugged in. You got to keep building your resume and. Yeah. Oh, you did a fantastic job interviewing these guys today, Lloyd. Thanks you so much. You know what? I have an idea for you, Lloyd. Yep. I don't know if you're staying fit, but if I were you, I would definitely challenge George to a tennis match. Tennis? <laughs> That's I, it's, it's she's, saying that, she's saying that, Lloyd, because she doesn't want me to embarrass you on the basketball court, just so you know. Oh. <laughs> Listen, to, Lloyd, take him up on it. Just, just, just pin go him down. Got to go where? Yeah, I go to my bread and butter. It's basketball. All right, we'll look at it tomorrow. We'll play basketball. As long as, uh, fine, we'll play basketball. We'll play basketball. <laughs> no, you can't play basketball. You can definitely play tennis. Oh, there's He's on one distancing. side, you're on the other side. Right, I'm going to film it. That's fine. Yeah. I'm always, I'm always open for a challenge. L Wait, Lloyd, have you ever played tennis? No, but I will try my best. <laughs> no, but I'm only want you to do it if you can beat him. Oh, uh, yeah! Man. Watching him beating him is one of the biggest joys in any wife's world. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I got, I got to. I should have asked one of them. Um, James, I should have asked James to train me. One of them to train me. Yeah. Uh, or maybe they're they, still they, watching. They they'll they'll call us back. <laughs> Well, hey, Lloyd, man, thanks so much. We're going to bring you back on, okay? So let's just stay okay. in contact. We'll bring you back on, bud. Um, yes, sir. In the, mean, in the meantime, stay self, uh, healthy and safe, okay, pal? You it's too. To Thank you. you. All right. And everybody out there, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm going to just give a big shout-out to Astute uh, uh, Academic, uh, Astute Academic for all what they do for the athlete, athletes as far as – and every student with uh, test prep and tutoring – Orthopedic Institute of Jersey, the County College of Morris, European Wax, Ivy Rehab. Oh, I love that place. Oh, what a great spot. What a great spot. What a wonderful woman. Judy Cook and Judy. Uh, uh, St. Francis Residential Hall, professional PT and training. Um, the Roxbury Diner, uh, homework helpers in Long Valley. And all the lovely people that keep supporting us and our athletes, we can't thank you enough. We will be out there shortly. In the meantime, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.